What's going on, y'all? It's your boy Tempster918. You feel me? Shit, man, we back. It's been a minute, y'all. The last video I was talking to y'all, uh, what was it? I was talking in my car about what, what like Battle State. I was talking about a BSG. And <clears throat> at the time, I didn't have my AC fixed. I actually got my windows tinted. I talked about that in my last video. I actually got my windows tinted. About damn time, man. Uh, it's been, I've been talking about it for years. And my mom hooked me up with it. Shout out to my mom. You know, she always coming through. Um, but uh, that's why I was waiting on these videos, man. To make them because get fucking paranoid. You know, I wanted to make these videos and then. I think about making them. Let me sit up proper here. Let me sit up properly in the seat, proper posture. <clears throat> but you know, I, I was thinking about making these and every time I went to a parking lot and shit, I would be like, oh man, I'd be looking around my shoulders every 10 fucking seconds and stuff. And I don't know what it is, but like people that I know can attest to it, but Jesus Christ, it's like, you know, you pull up to an open spot. And for those who are introverted, you already know what I'm talking about. But you know, you pull up to an open fucking spot I'm in a parking lot right now and completely by myself all the way to the farthest left possible. It's damn near dead because it's raining outside right now and it's cold and I mean it's a Saturday but it looks like the most of the stores I'm close to are dead and um, you know you'll have that one person that just decides to pull up right beside you for no fucking reason. I don't know why it happens. You know there are people with just dead ass mile long parking lot you're all the way to the left you're by yourself on purpose you're not you know you're like let me get away because people wouldn't want to park near me right because logically speaking why would you want to park near me if, unless you got like a sports car or something and why would you want to walk all the way to the store but no yeah it can be it could be sunny as hell a normal car will pull up right beside you and then just look at you like this they'll pull up beside you and then just just turn their head and I'm just like, what the fuck is you doing? You know? So I'm happy I got the windows tinted. Another thing, too, is that my AC was fucking broken for, like, years. And uh, throughout the summer, man, I, I like, would barely survive. But I didn't feel like getting it fixed. I didn't want to pay for that shit. And uh, I got that fixed, too. Because, um, you know, heat, man, it's just fucking different, dog. You know, you're putting your windows down, especially when the humidity is outside. It's crazy. can only do so much for you. And uh, last time when I was making that video on uh, Tarkov talking about it in the car, that shit had to be cut short because I started sweating like a motherfucker. Like I had this on and I was like trying to play it off. But underneath the hat and whatever I was wearing in the previous video, I was sweating bullets. I had to take a shower when I got home and all the clothes I was wearing, I had to immediately fucking put away in the hamper because everything was drenched, man. And it was only like 80 degrees outside. But in my car, I felt like 200. But <clears throat> I've spent three minutes talking about that. Um, back to, I guess, the topic at hand. What was the topic of this video? I don't even know what the fuck else is we talking about. Ah, um, uh, yes, yes. Work. And why it sucks, man. You know, why it sucks. I just don't get why or how people can do this shit for their entire life, <laughs> you know? They can just do this shit for years of their life and think that it's okay. You know, throughout the years, y'all, if you've watched my channel, you're an OG subscriber. Thank y'all for rocking with me. For those who are brand new, welcome to the craziness. Some people call this the job interview channel or the job... Um, site channel because the amount of jobs I've been through man I, off the top of my head that I can name right now uh, Safeway Coca-Cola FedEx ground as a driver and FedEx in a warehouse USPS uh, I was working for this trash this local trash company for a little bit um, Frito-Lay did I mention Frito-Lay already um uh, Amazon, damn, uh, like I, I've got an actual list, I've, I've got a piece of paper that, that's at the house that I look at, and every single time I get a new job, I write down that job, and it's, and it's got everything from when I first started working all the way up until now, 
and it's got like 13 or 14 of it of them on there uh i can't remember every one right now but uh i have to take a look at that and get back to y'all on that i'm just documenting my journey so when i'm finally fucking financially free and out of this shit ass nine to five stuff i'll have something to look back at and just recount the memories on and i can tell y'all stories about uh certain jobs but man I'm just like, I'm so confused. I sit there and I think to myself every single day, like, how the hell do people just get up and just go to work 60, 70 years, man? This is, I know people, a lot of people say this shit, but it's just like, there's no way. There's no way. And it's crazy because people give you advice, not trying to hurt you, but they give you advice on the shit that they do, but they don't even like their lives themselves. And that's what I'd be so confused and bamboozled about for real. I'd be sitting there thinking, I'm just like, how in the hell, you know, friends and family, and I had people tell me before my streams and stuff like that, you know, so I'd listen to my mom, so I'd listen to my dad and, and you know, what should I do with my life? And I'm not so sure what path to take and if the, if the advice I'm giving is good and it's just like yo don't you wouldn't take advice from how to own a home from a homeless person right but like, that sounds fucked up but let's just be real like you're not gonna go that's the last per you would like that wouldn't even register in your brain you wouldn't even think about going up to a homeless person and being like yo so what is equity you know that you just wouldn't do that like it, hey can you tell me what a mortgage is I mean they probably would they're not stupid but you know they you know it, it wouldn't it wouldn't it wouldn't fit the motive you know what i mean so it's just like christ uh why would you listen to someone who has not done what you've done you know what I mean? or or done what you want to do you know and i think often that's what happens a lot people want to give you advice family and friends they want to give you advice on how to make money how to become successful and how to do certain things like that and uh the level of success that you're trying to achieve more than likely they haven't achieved it and if they have achieved it then i'm assuming they would have shared it with you by now by that time and you shouldn't ask someone who's never even seen a million dollars how to make a million dollars like what the, what, what the fuck are they gonna know like they don't know shit they never even made a fraction of that money in their lifetime know what i mean but man you know you see people and i see these people at my job my friend was fucking talking about it and, and I see people at my job, and they're just excited, you know. They're just like, you know, they're excited for that shit, and I just don't get it. And I'm not talking about, like, the mentality, like, excited about life. I'm just talking about just the job in general. It's just like, holy shit. Like, you know, you wake up, you go in, woo! Let's fucking go. I'm excited. Can't wait to be underpaid and underappreciated given bullshit to do every single fucking day let's go god i love fucking making the fucking man if there's one thing that i love doing is making the stock and shareholders richer we have to increase shareholder value no matter what man this is imperative that we get this done oh my god man it's like Every single day is the same robotic shit, same monotonous task, same people, same customers, same bullshit. Look, I applaud anybody working in the customer service industry. I I cannot think. I mean, I've had jobs, for example, when I worked at Safeway that sometimes I would deal with customers, but it was very limited customer like react like, you know, I mean, uh, interactions like if I was being a bagger for um uh, a cashier or some shit like that you know what I mean I would bag the groceries and sometimes the customers wouldn't even acknowledge me which is fine I don't want them to sometimes the customers will come up to me and like say something to me or, or say how you doing and I would you know give them a nod how are you whatever the case may be I think the most like the closest customer service job that I've ever had was probably when I worked at the gas station at Safeway uh, because, I mean, people come in, they get gas, they want to get snacks, they tell me 20 on pump 2, whatever the fuck. That's like the closest customer service, I guess, I've worked with people. But that was like very limited. Like people come in, shit, less than, 
you know, 10 seconds, less than 20 seconds, they're already out of there. And no one's really trying to have conversations, right? Uh, man, like customers can just be fucking insufferable. I remember my boy telling me, uh, he when he worked at Burger King, we first both got our, our first jobs out of high school. You know, he was at he was at the window or something like that, and uh, he had made a customer some ice cream or some shit. He handed her the ice cream. And this woman said some shit like, "I don't like the way this looks." It's just some stupid shit. Like, I don't like the way this looks. Oh. And um, my boy was just like, what? And she was like, I don't like the way this swirl came out. The swirl, like she wasn't bitching about the fucking actual ice cream itself or the taste of it or something. She just swirl was messed up. And she was like, I, well, you're gonna need to make me a new one. And my boy, he was on the phone with me. I bust out laughing. He, was, he told his manager, well, you can come do this shit then because I'm not doing it. And it's like, I, I, my customer interactions, man, I can only think of a couple of them that, that, I mean, only one really. I remember when I was at the gas station, there was this dude that came in, you know, he just was like a normal dude, like just, just, just typical ghetto nigga, you know, he came in and, um, you know, he wanted some change and he wanted to buy some stuff and, you know, he asked for, um, you know, he asked for something, he paid for it and then, uh, I gave him his change and he was like, uh, thank you, you piece of shit. Or thank you, fuck niggas. So, so something like that. And I just stared at him. He just stared back at me and smiled. Then he walked out and I was like, oh, okay, you know, that's just trying to, you know, that's just trying to get a reaction out of me, right? That's like, that's, that's the only time that I've, yeah, that's the only time that I've ever had like any bad customer interactions. Uh, actually, when I, when I was driving for FedEx, uh, I did have a customer, I know I'm just rambling, but one, I did have a customer that um, I was driving down a road, I wasn't even going like 20, you know, 25 miles an hour or some shit, it was like a neighborhood, I wasn't even going like 25, I hear this country ass motherfucker, I mean the typical attire, the typical, I guess, country truck driver motherfucker had on the goddamn country hat, had straw hanging out his mouth and shit, fucked up teeth, had on a ripped uh, white beater shirt on and shit with stains on it and had some dirty ass jeans and some cowboy boots. I hear him scream, hi! I fucking, I break and shit. I'm thinking that, you know, maybe I missed his package or something. So I look out the window and I'm like, yes. He's like, you need to slow down. That's exactly how he said that shit. He pointed at me, you need it. Cause he even had the, he even had the trucker walkie. I mean, the trucker, um, headset on like the bluetooth like i don't know what the fuck it is with old heads and not just getting your standard bluetooth or just getting airpods or some shit or just the bluetooth that goes in your ear they gotta have the actual headset with the fucking the mic that goes down to the mouth he had that shit hanging on his head and like it, he of course every trucker is gonna have the overweight shit so he had his belly that started right here and went all the way past his damn belt you know his stomach was hanging over his fucking belt and he's like, you need to slow down. You need to, he said so he wasn't smiling. He's like, you need to slow down. I just, and like, I dead ass, I just, I looked out, out the window. I looked at him. I was like, man. And that, that's exactly what I did verbatim. I said, man, I just kept driving. Other than that, I don't know. Okay. And another FedEx, another FedEx one. Like this dude was scared of shit. I don't know. I, like, like the place that I delivered at. Um, when I was on that route, it's in, it was like in Upper Virginia, uh, so it was just predominantly white. I'm just gonna be real with you. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it for real. It was predominantly white up there and shit. So I'm pretty sure the motherfuckers did not like black people up there. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Like anytime I delivered to those houses, they wouldn't really say anything directly to me. But like you know, I'd give them a package. They wouldn't say thank you, or they would just look at me, or they would just stare out the window and shit. Uh, a lot of them, if they were nice, they'd be say things like, "Man, please be careful out here," or you know, they give me warnings like, "Please be careful out here," or you know, "Hey, have a great day, man. Try not to be out here too late." Or, 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 hey, man, it gets dangerous, man. Make sure you protect yourself, man. Or make sure you don't run into any people with bad intentions. Like, they'd give me warnings like that, you know what I mean? And, like, I do remember pulling up to this one guy's house. And this guy, I mean, he's cutting his grass. 
and his garage is open. It's it's not raining or anything like that. So I'm like, oh, okay, bet I'm just gonna put his package in the garage. So I just get scan the package like I normally do. Get out the truck, put it in the garage. Uh, get back in the truck. I put this shit in reverse, and once again I just hear, hey. I'm like, what the fuck? I look out of the window, and this dude is fucking Usain Bolting towards me. I don't know if y'all can hear that, but my fucking phone's getting notifications right now. He's just fucking Usain. I thought somebody was looking at me, even though they can't even see me. I got 5% tint all throughout this bitch. You can't see nothing up in here, baby. But, you know, I'm just looking around and shit because paranoia more than likely. But, you know, he screams. He's like, hey, and this man's just Usain Bolting. And like he like he looks at me, he's he's like panting, he's like looking around, he's like, huh, 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 huh. and like he runs to his garage and he starts checking shit. He's like, uh, uh. Then he looks back at me, he's just like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I I thought my dog was in front of the truck. And he just kept moving his eyes. He was like, I thought my dog was in front of the truck. Um, you're good, you're good. And I was like, this racist ass motherfucker, like, bro, you thought you dead ass thought I was gonna steal something. Like, I'm in a big-ass fucking FedEx truck. Big-ass truck that's got the word FedEx ground on the side of this bitch. Got purple and green on this shit. You think I'm going to come up in your driveway and steal something? Another thing, too, is that not bad customer interactions, but just a shitty-ass stop I had on my route. I had this prison. It was a prison that I had to go to, and I hated going to that fucking prison because every time I went to that prison, they wouldn't want you to sign in. Most of the time... I wouldn't even sign in. Most of the time, I get away with that shit. I could drive right past the little main building because there was like the main building. When you turn into the prison, there's like a mile long road, and then you get to the main building where you sign in at, right? And then they also had inmates, like uh, they also had inmates uh, cleaning, I guess, inmates on good behavior or some shit like that, cleaning and sweeping it on the outside, cutting grass and shit. And then there's like another half a mile. You drive past the sign in place to the actual warehouse in the back where you deliver the shit. So I pull up, and uh, most of the time, like I said, I would drive right past that shit. But man, there were some dumbass fucking correctional officers there, dog. Pissing them on my fucking... Uh, not pissing on me, that's not cool. But I mean, getting on my fucking nerves, pissing me off is what I meant to say. Um, you know, and, and, and I would pull up, and like I said, sometimes I would drive past and I would just get looks by the correctional officers because anytime you signed in, they'd get on the walkie talkie and they got to make that, you know, sound around the the, the place. Um, and, you know, FedEx on the way back to the warehouse right now. So and so signed in. They're going to the back. Like they always do shit. So if I didn't sign in, they would get no people on the radio. And then when I would drive back there, the only thing to do, the only thing that would happen is the correctional officers would just be looking at me the whole time because they never got the okay from the front that, you know, somebody was coming in. Um, and sometimes on I would drive past the goddamn warehouse, man, the, 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 the sign in. When I would drive past that, I would get a call. I mean, I wouldn't get a call, but I had this one dude did some crazy ass maneuver. He got in front of my truck. He gets out. He puts his hand up. He's like, hey, I'm like, yeah. And like he sees me. He recognizes me because I'm there every single fucking day. That's the one stop that I hate. And I'm there. And, you know, he's like, hey, what's up, man? He was like, I'm sorry, man, but you got to go back and sign that. And I was like, for real. Another thing, too, I hated about that shit is that they closed at three fucking thirty. They, they stopped receiving packages at 3.30. And same thing with pickup windows. It was always like 3.30 was the cutoff time, which is so damn dumb. Because the the way that the route is set up is like the, the prison is at the end of the route. So if we don't have a good dispatch time and we're late or I'm running a little bit behind or even if everything is going good, it's still really difficult to get to the prison in time. So a lot of the times what I'd have to do, especially because it's fucking FedEx and everything is fucked up, you know, and I would barely have good dispatch times, I'd have to cut the route in half. I'd have to stop on one side and go all the way to the prison just to get the pickups or just to deliver them, to deliver their shit and then drive back to the other side to finish the deliveries and then drive back to the prison side again on that side and then get all the deliveries over there since they had a 3.30 end time. So fucking dumb. But, um, you know, yeah, one time I pull, I pull up into the prison. I'm driving. Uh, dude, like I said, he, he said, you know, you got to turn around, man. It's 3.27, y'all. It's 3.27. I'm like, oh, shit. You know, okay, okay. Um, um, 
Uh, I'm like, all right, man, can I do that when I come back? He's just like, oh, hold on. I, I asked him, I said, what time did they close? I already knew it was 3.30, but I wanted him to, oh, shit, hold on, y'all. Hold on, hold on. God damn it. 